like these domed caps make a better centrifuge seal, but they make it so much harder to label things. Like, I feel like they do this just to torture you by making you squish all the little writing into the center. So really it's like some sort of like, there's an arch thing that makes a better centrifuge seal. But really what I'm using these tubes for the most part is just to hold and store liquids, um, cell pellets, that sort of thing. And when I do this, I like to label the lid, but not just the lid, also the side. Um, and so today I just wanted to talk about some labeling practices because labeling is like super duper duper important. So whenever you label a bottle, you never just want to label the lid because when you take off the lid, well, now your lid is separated from the thing that it was supposed to be attached to. Which now, if you have a bunch of tubes and now you have a bunch of tube bottoms, well, which tube was which? Um, if you're on the lids then, and then you swap the lids, ah! It's like when you have those Sharpies and you put the wrong Sharpie cap on the cap. But anyway, at least that time you have the lab right on the lid and you can see when you take it open. But if you have two solutions that look like identical, then how do you get it out? Okay, so what do you put on the tube? So you can't fit, even with a flat tube, even with a flat tube, especially a smaller flat tube, you can't fit everything on the lid. But you want to put the main important things like what it is. So for example, this bottle of, tr this um, tube of Tris I made on um, this like buffer. So I have like 10 millimolar Tris pH 8 on the lid because that's what, if I'm going to go and I have a rack of tubes and I want to see, okay, well, what's what? I'm going to look at the top of the tube, which is why it's important that you label the top of the tube and not just the side of the tube, but you also don't want to label just the side of the tube because then when you take the cap off, we have that problem that we talked about before. So you want to um, label, you can fit more information on the side of the tube, but you need to be able to see basically at first glance, which is the tube that I want probably. And then on the side of the tube, you put all the information like the date, your initials, any other information that you might need. Um, and so it's a lot easier to do this with flat lids, um, but we have these like dome lids too, which apparently have a better centrifuge seal, but drive me crazy. Sometimes there's other information that you want. Um, and so for like a protein expression pellet, I normally put like the number of tubes, like one of four, two of four, three of four, for there's that sort of thing, as well as the protein construct. Then, um, so basically just like what the protein is inside of it. And then on the side of the tube, I'll put more information, um, including the date, the cell type, any other notes. Um, and so you can't fit all that on the top of the tube, but on the top of the tube, you want to use what's important for you. Anyway, so what about Eppendorf tubes, these little tiny tubes? Now you have to write even, even tinier. So it's really great if you have like a fine tube, a uh, fine point Sharpie, um, or like a lab version of it. They make some like lab pens that are more resistant to like ethanol and that sort of thing, which is helpful. I'm getting back to those like smaller tubes. So here you can't fit as much on the top, but you still wanna stick something on the top um, as well as on the side so that when you have your box of tubes, you can see what's on the cap. Thankfully with these, these are attached. Although sometimes you have the ones that like screw off. Sometimes when companies sell the tubes um, like in a kit or something, they, they sell the tubes and there's nothing on the top of the tube and there's like a screw lid. But even for one screw lid, if you have a box of tubes, you don't wanna be like push, taking every tube out, especially when they're working with like like sensitive enzymes and stuff, you don't want to, have to be pulling every tube out. So typically what they do is what, so when they come in that way where they're just like, the, the, the top is blank. And often the tops are actually flat. It's like, why didn't you stick something there? So you can write on it. Um, unfortunately, when you get them, they're all cold and then it's hard to write on. So you have to like Kim wipe it off and then write really quickly before all the condensation comes back. Um, but basically it's important to label your tube tops and the side of your tubes. There is an extra complication. Oh wait, one more thing while I'm on the topic of those like tubes you might get in a kit. Um, so unfortunately I learned the hard way that sometimes the, so when they have like, you think, okay, there's a lot number on the side of the tube. Apparently that lot number corresponds to like just the tube component. And when you go to the site to try to look up a lot, then it's like, you must use the lot number that was on the kit, but then you've already thrown away the kit box. And then sometimes the tubes don't even have expiration date. So the other day I was like, well, how old is this enzyme? I have no idea. But back to the main story. Okay, so for the labeling, try to label your things before you actually stick stuff in them. So say you have a solution that you're making and it needs to be kept um, on ice. Or maybe you have a tube, you're aliquoting some, an enzyme into a bunch of tubes 
label the tubes first because now what's gonna happen is you stick your enzyme in and now you're like okay I'm gonna label the top of the tube I'm gonna label the side of the tube and you have this fragile little protein in here and it's supposed to be kept in like ice at least um and you're up here like holding it like ah, blah, 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 you know and now you're warming it all up and making it unhappy so if you label your tubes first that's gonna prevent this problem. So it's nice if you can label your tubes and then like stick them into the ice, pre-cool them a little, and then put your um, thing in. Another thing is that when you're trying to label tubes that are on ice and then it gets cold, and then you have that whole condensation problem that we were talking about before. So it's really helpful when these have like a lid and yeah, it's all attached. And so if the lid is on here, then it's okay. Well, what if the lid breaks off? This can happen in your centrifuge if you're doing a centrifuge where you have to do it open. Um, and speaking of which, you can do it like open. You can put the put the lid open towards the um, towards the rotor and kind of like at an angle if you have a bunch of them so they're not all hitting each other. Make sure it's going in the direction that like it's going with the flow of the centrifuge so it doesn't snap off. But you also want to label the side of the tube in case it does snap off and just because you can fit more stuff on the side of the tube. Okay. When you, speaking of those like things where you have to leave the cap open, so one of those things is like when you're doing a later step of a mini prep. So when you're doing a mini prep, like and similar things like a PCR purification, that sort of thing, a column base, thin column base method. So you have these little columns that you stick in this outer tube and you label the outer tube. Well, now when you take the columns out, you may need to and pour off whatever's in here you need to make sure that you put the right column back in the tube so sometimes if you're doing a lot of these at once you might kind of like be doing a bunch at once you take two up you pour it off and whatever so it's easy to get mixed up so be really really careful same applies to like centrifuge um centrifuge filters i um, mean concentrators for your proteins um so one time i was like ha i'll be clever and i'll write on the inside i'll write on this part and then when i pull it out i won't get confused but then the ethanol like made the ink run into my sample uh or and yeah it was it was a mess so be very very careful um when you are using those okay so you always want to label but you don't always need to label as well as you do for other times so if something's going for like long-term um storage like a protein expression pellet or something there's no way that you're going to remember like two years from now exactly what you did on that day. So it's important that you put a lot of details and details that will allow you to reference back to your detailed notes. Um, so it's really important, the date, the date, the date, I keep saying the date, but when you have the date, you can look back at your notes and see the notes about that date, about that various prep, about that sort of thing. It's also important to have the date because if you have like multiple aliquots of something and your prop, you have, and you've done like multiple preps and maybe you're having problems with your experiment you want to see okay well is it am i using a different prep than i'd used before and that sort of thing and so having the aliqua is really helpful um or having the date is really helpful so you can reference back oh that was my like lot number um so companies have lot numbers you can have your own kind of lot number in the form of the date that you prepared something um, if you are doing like a lot of aliquots, sometimes maybe you don't want to write the whole date on every single tube, you can then put the tubes in a box and label the box with the date that you made things and then just make sure to update it um, when you make a new prep or that sort of thing. Boxes. Um, so you want to label each side of the box as well as the top of the box. Um, if it matters, you can label the bottom of the box if it's something that you worry, but usually you can see what's inside once you open the box. But um, don't just label the top because then when it's in the stack you can't see it. Don't just label one side because then if it's not on the side you can't see it. Um, so label your boxes all the way around. Also, if you use an aliquot of something um, and you're going to use it again, um, it, sometimes it's helpful to set it aside or put a little dot on it or something to indicate that you've used it. Um, and that way, if there's a problem or something, you can go back and say, oh, that was the tube I used. Um, or if you need, no, like for this experiment, I really, really need to make sure I use a fresh tube, then you're pretty sure that you do. Just make sure that you have a system that works for you where you're able to cross-reference between your things. So that's, so for more, more detailed, um, for long-term stuff, you wanna get really, really detailed. But what about those tubes that you're just gonna like use right away? So sometimes you think you're gonna use something right away and then you get distracted or maybe your boss calls you in for a meeting and then you come back and uh-oh, what was what? So you always, always, always need to label your tubes, your beakers, your everything. 
Um, even if you don't think that, even if you think, oh, well, I'm just gonna use it right away. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to have multiple tubes and you're like, oh, well, I'll remember which is which. And then you don't remember which is which. Maybe you put something in a centrifuge to spin and you don't have the, um, you're just using a centrifuge balance and that balance isn't labeled. So typically we label little balance tubes with like an X or PAL or something. But say you use a tube that you just found and like, oh, this would make a good balance. And you don't have a label on your tube. And now you stick them both in the centrifuge and now which one is which. If you label things, you won't have that problem. Um, and so yes, label, label, label. So tubes are also don't label. So even if it's something that you're going to use really um, right away, maybe you're doing a protein gel and you have like 10 tubes labeled out and you, it's like, oh, why don't I just put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Well, what if you want to save those for later um, and rerun the sample later? Or what if you have to run multiple gels that same day and you have like one, two, you have three things labeled one to 10. So at least use a different color or something. Use something that's going to distinguish um, what experiment it was. Um, and also maybe you put your tubes in the thing and then you're um, like a heater block and maybe then your colleague puts their tubes in and they're both labeled with one, two, three, four, five. And yeah, it's a mess. And then sometimes you'll find tubes in the freezer labeled one, two, three, four, five. And you're like, what the heck is this? So please use better labeling than one, two, three, four, five, unless you're literally, literally, literally like standing and watching your samples and going to take them right away. Because yeah, it can get really annoying to write a ton of stuff on a tube when you're like, I'm literally going to throw this away in two seconds. But the important thing is that you find a system that works for you and you don't have problems where things are mislabeled or things aren't labeled and you don't know. Um, so going back to the whole idea about like labeling caps versus bo bottles and that sort of thing. When you are labeling like a Petri dish. So here, when you take the Petri dish off, uh-oh, which cell was this? So with bacterial Petri dishes, um, typically what I like to do is I like to write around the edge. So I will put um, like the, whatever the, like the plasmid name or whatever. And then the cell type, so DH5 alpha, BL21, that sort of thing, and the date, um, and that, and et cetera. It's really helpful with bacteria plates that you can just like write along the edges. And so you wanna write along the edges. Don't just like write all the way across here because then you're like, uh oh, is that a colony? I can't tell because I have a big Sharpie mark right there. Um, and so write along the edges so you can see things more clearly. It's nice for bacterial cells because, well, you typically store them upside down, you can keep them upside down. Those little colonies aren't just gonna blop off of the top and by keeping it upside down, then the condensation isn't going to plop onto your, your plate and grow weird stuff. But say you're working with like mammalian cells, now you have to be really careful. Um, if you're doing like a cell culture thing where you have to keep the plates like this because you have like a bunch of liquid, um, so now you have to be writing on like the top of the lid and you want to be really careful. So maybe we put some sort of mark on the side of the, of the um, thing or something so that you also have some thing that you can refer to that will allow you to reference between the top of the thing and the bottom of the thing. So find something that works for you so that, and keep in mind that when you take the lids off, maybe you're going to suck out your media, uh oh, which, to, which plate is which. Um, so people find different things, different strategies, different labeling things that are going to work best for them. Okay, so those were just some notes on labeling from someone who labels a lot, a lot of stuff. Oh, speaking of labeling, I made new use for the ring stand that was there. Okay, so speaking of labeling, when you label a bottle, uh, make sure you put the little like, fold down the side, fold the little tab, so that your tape is not going to get stuck on um, stuck on the bottom and then you're trying to like um, take it all out. Um, and if you have like color coding, that also is a very helpful thing. And now I think that that's pretty much it. Oh, when you get like a bot, when you get something, um, a new chemical bottle or something like that, it's helpful to put the date on it, um, the date that you opened it. Okay, now I really think I am done. Okay, now I'm gonna go. Bye.